So I arrived at Cold Spring Harbour in the spring of 1979 uh, to do a two-year postdoctoral fellowship and I brought the science that I was working on in Australia to Cold Spring Harbour because it was a great research environment for young people and I didn't anticipate that I'd still be here 32 years later. When I was first working here, one of the things that struck me was that it was an extremely interactive place. And I think that's still true today. There's a lot of interaction. There's a lot of really smart people. If you're looking for a collaborator, you're likely to be able to find somebody uh, in the next building. It's an exciting place where people help each other instead of weed each other out. The mix of scientists from different disciplines uh, in, a, in a very small community where everyone knows each other creates a certain magic. Taking risks and trying innovative approaches is expected and that that is going to be considered as part of your job. And that means you're not here to turn a crank, uh, you're here to have some big ideas and pursue them. Even if they fail, it's better that you went after them. Our research focuses on acute myeloid leukemia and there's been enormous progress in sort of understanding this disease and what causes it. Our, our basic strategy is we're trying to find new cancer targets. And so the idea is that we find what the cancers need and then we try to go after it with therapies. It's very much centered on these therapeutic development and cancer questions. Chris found five new therapeutic targets. For one of them, there was an existing drug for a completely different reason. It is now under further development and will go into the clinic to treat chemotherapy-resistant acute myeloid leukemia in patients. And I'm very, very optimistic that this will become a new contributor to the treatment of what was an incurable leukemia. A lot of the research on autism has focused more on the social aspect, um, but I think that understanding what's happening on the sensory side is really important. And the way that we process sensory information uh, determines a lot of who we are and how we interact with the world and the kinds of decisions that we make. And by understanding more about how we put together pieces of sensory information, I think it might give us real insight into what's going on in autism spectrum disorder. Mike Wiggler's laboratory has literally changed the way we think about autism because they found that a very high number of autistic children have spontaneous copy number variations in their genome. That research has coupled with our research on cognitive neuroscience by the newly arrived Anne Churchland, and I think the marrying of what Anne does is going to be a very powerful linking between genetics and uh, neuroscience. My daughter has spinal muscular atrophy, and the reason to get involved with Cold Spring Harbor Laboratories, I think, has been uh, really twofold. We care deeply about the work Dr. Kriner is doing, and so helping him is helping our daughter. More generally, it seems to me that places where great work is being done ought to be helped. Uh, if we can take the work and magnify it and increase it, uh, the impact on people's health and science is going to be tremendous. Spending money is one thing. Spending money in a way that really produces results uh, and creates great science, I think, is another. And I think uh, at Cold Spring, uh, that's really what we see going on. So our ability to go out and raise funds from uh, donors of the laboratory and to support these young scientists, such as Chris Fakish and Anne Churchland, and even our senior scientists, such as Adrian Craner, enable our scientists to move into areas which would be otherwise difficult to do. There's really no other place that I know of that has this combination of fantastic scientists on the campus but also this convening ability uh, to bring other groups here uh, for some of the best meetings that occur anywhere in the world. I would call Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory um, a learning hub or a, sort of a congregation point for essentially every scientist in, in the cancer research field certainly and, and even more broadly. Uh, Cold Spring Harbor has sort of placed themselves uh, in the center of both great science and great education. For the past 120 years, Cold Spring Harbor has been a leading genetics research center in the United States and in fact throughout the world. And one of the things that I think in the future I'll look back at the time I've been at Cold Spring Harbor and say that Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory has exploited its powerful genetic technologies to understanding disease. I expect that we will have a big impact on cancer therapies. We have already and will continue to have a big impact on understanding neurological disorders, particularly cognitive disorders such as autism and schizophrenia and depression. I want the lab to you know, change the world for the better. Not in a marginal way, but in a sort of way that 
you know, people can drive by us and say, they cured cancer. I think it's exciting times. I think Cold Spring Harbor is exactly in the right position right now. And I hope in the future I'll look back and say, well, in a small way I contributed to it.